Now let's have a look how we can process this digital information. Let us consider an input of n bits and we want to process these into an output of m bits. I'm going to indicate this as some kind of black box and with some lines carrying this information and this line here just indicates that this can collect many of these bits and not just a single one. Now we want to have a very general way to do this and first this looks like a daunting task because we have two to the n possible inputs and for each of these we have two to the m possible outputs. So how many different ways are there to process the information? Well, the number of ways or number of algorithms, if you like, is two to the m to the power two to the n. And this is a very large number indeed. This is one of the reasons why computational tasks can be so complex, because a computer needs to be able to do in principle all of these. And this assumes that we have an algorithm that can achieve what we want, which is not guaranteed. But what helps a lot is that we can break down these tasks into smaller steps, and in particular into so-called logical gates. Which involve two elements. First of all, that will represent the different bits in a logical way. Zero we will interpret as a false statement and one we will interpret as a true statement. And secondly, that we can then apply logical operations, so-called Boolean algebra, to individual bits or pairs of bits. Now, if we apply these operations on individual bits, then we call these unary gates. And if we apply them on any pair of bits, then we call them binary gates. Now we will encounter different representations of these gates, graphical representations, logical representations, mathematical representations, and most concretely, tables, which we call truth tables. Now the graphical representation of a unary gate is always the same basic form. It takes one input bit and has one output bit, while for a binary gate we simply have two input bits and still a single output bit. Now examples of the logical operations that you encounter are the NOT operation on a single bit, or the AND operation on a pair of bits. Mathematically we will have operations on integers such as this, or pairs of integers such as this, and the tables make all of this very concrete by specifying which outputs you obtain for the different inputs. Now when one applies this for instance to the unary gates, we find that there are exactly four different unary gates. And we can specify them all by the corresponding table. In this table we first record all the possible input values, 0 and 1, which correspond to the false and the true statement in Boolean logic. And then as an output, for instance, we could just have two zeros or two false statements. And that just specifies one of the possible unary gates, which I'm going to denote as F0. Now the other three possibilities are just the other possible combinations of outcomes, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And I'm going to denote the corresponding gates as F0, 1, F1, 0, and F1, 1. Now this specifies the truth table, but this can also be interpreted as logical operations in which we have an outcome which is always false or always true in these two cases. 
So this would be always false or always true. Here we do not do anything to the input. We can call this the identity. And here we transform true statements into false statements and vice versa. And this we call the not operation. So this is this not operation in here. Logically, one denotes this outcome also as an X with an overbar. And as indicated here, we can also interpret it as a function on integers. Now, as a graphical representation, there are very special symbols for these, but in this course, we will simply just write the name of the gate inside the box. And so if this has an input x, what we obtain on the other side is just not x, which can also be interpreted as 1 minus x. Now, there are 16 binary gates, but we are going to focus on just a few. So there, in principle, there are 16 binary gates. all of the form of taking two inputs, which we can denote as x and y. And then if we have any kind of gate here as an output, logically we would often denote this as x, a, y. And here we consider that this is the logical operation end or exclusive or, or not end. So let me record these cases all into a truth table where we record the input values x, y, which occur in the following four combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then we can, for instance, have as an output the logical operation x and y. This is the logical operation which is only true when the two input statements are true as well. So only in the case down here, we get a true statement or a one and all the other cases we get a zero. Now in the case of uh, X or Y, this is the logical statement that is true if at least one of the input statements are true. So this is the case for all of these three statements here and just not the case for this statement here. Now the exclusive OR operation is defined to be true only if exactly one of the two input statements is true, so only in the two middle cases. And the NOT AND operation is just the opposite of the AND operation. So this will have the following outputs. Now as a graphical example, the XOR operation would take the inputs X and Y. and give us a single output, which is x, x, or y. And now we can also think what all of this means mathematically. So for instance, the result of x and y is just the same as multiplying the two numbers x and y. And um, this here will just be 1 minus x and y, just the not operation applied after the end operation. The OR operation can be written as 1 minus 1 minus x times 1 minus y. And this indeed indicates that you can think of it as composed of other logical operations. So maybe you have a look at this. And finally, let's have a look at the mathematical operation corresponding to the XOR operation. Well, it turns out to be almost like a sum. So 0 plus 0 is clearly 0. 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. And 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, which is in binary representation 1, 0. And what we want is really just like the last bit in here. But this can be obtained by just taking this number, so-called modulo 2. So just taking the remainder after division by 2. So we can interpret this mathematically as x plus y modulo 2. But because this operation is so important for us, we will also employ a shorthand notation for this, namely a plus sign with a circle around it. So this is the addition of integers modulo 2. So we would also write this then here as the outcome being x plus y modulo 2. Now a very interesting aspect of all of these gates from a fundamental perspective is that almost none of them are reversible. 
so you cannot use them to retrace your information back from your output to your input. Well, for the unary gates, it doesn't look too bad. In two cases, we can actually retrace our inputs, namely in these two cases here. However, in the other two cases, the output is independent of the input, so we cannot use the output to reconstruct the input. And now for the binary gates, it's even worse because we have only a single output for two inputs, so in none of these cases, we can use the output in order to reconstruct the input. So there is the idea to build a computer which is completely reversible, and for this you would have to have reversible gates. And in particular, for instance, binary gates that have also two outputs, and these outputs can be used to reconstruct the inputs. So we would have to have some additional outputs there. Now, the most important example that we will indeed encounter also later in this course of such a reversible binary gate is the so-called C0 gate. And I'm going to specify it first by its truth table. So we have as inputs, as before, the combination 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, and then the following outputs, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. Now, when we look at this table, it follows a very systematic pattern. First of all, we see that every possible output combination appears exactly once. So this will guarantee that we can reconstruct the input from the output. And secondly, we see that the first output is exactly the same as the input x. The second one turns out to be the same as y in these two cases. And the negative or opposite of y in these two cases. But this is exactly when the first input is 1. So this can be interpreted in several ways. First of all, mathematically, this can be written simply as x added to y modulo 2. And secondly, we can interpret it as an instruction to change the state of the second bit exactly when the first bit is 1. And that's why we call it a controlled NOT operation. We say this is an instruction to change the state of the second bit only when the first bit is 1. But we keep the value of the first bit so that we get a reconstructable output so that we can retrace our steps after the operation has ended. Now, as a symbol, we can represent this generically in the following way. We have inputs x and y, and outputs x and x plus y modulo 2. But because this will be so important for the remainder of the course, we also introduce a very bespoke symbol, and this is really the only gate in which we are going to introduce this very special symbol. And this is what I've given here. So here we have a dot. And this is um, signifying the action of the so-called control bit. We call this bit here the control bit, and this is just x. It does not change its value, but it is controlling what happens to the second bit, which is y, and it changes into x plus y modulo 2. So this is the most important reversible gate that we will indeed also encounter later on in this course. Now to build a reversible computer that can carry out all possible tasks, this actually turns out to be not enough. We will also need some gates that act on at least three different bits. And I just mentioned this here for completeness, but this could for instance be the Toffoli gate, which is a controlled not gate, but with an additional control bit. So graphically, this could be represented in the following way, with two control bits x and y, acting on a target bit, instructing to change the state of the target bit, but only if both x and y are in the state 1. The two control bits do not change their state, and the third bit changes its state if x and y are both 1, which we can express as an AND operation. So with this additional type of gate, you could then build a classical computer that would be completely reversible using only reversible gates, also of course for the unary and binary operations.